Albany's tallest building? Let's go inside the Corning Tower. Let's go to the observation deck where we can discover the stunning views of Albany, New York. Standing at 589 feet, Corning Tower is the tallest building in New York outside of New York City. It offers panoramic vistas that are simply unforgettable. Join us as I take you on a visual journey showcasing the beautiful skyline, the historic landmarks, and the picturesque landscape of Albany. Whether you're a local resident or a first-time visitor, this observation deck provides a unique perspective of the capital region. Experience the beauty of the Hudson River, the Empire State Classic, like never before. Travel across America with me. First things first, where do you park? We found finding a parking spot in Albany around the Empire Plaza sort of difficult. We got one of the last spots in a parking lot near the State Museum. We then walked under the roadway toward Corning Tower. The observation deck was our goal. And yes, we're going to make a stop at the Capitol. The museum, library, and archives are behind us. We're not going there today. But we want to show you some great places, including the egg. Welcome to the Governor Nelson A. Rockefeller Empire State Plaza. Let's go in. I'll be taking you to the Corning Tower. We're heading to the observation deck where we can see the Capitol and the Convention Center, the egg, and so much more. You'll want to hold on to see every great place from the 42nd floor of the Corning Tower observation deck. And the best part? The views are the best part, of course. As a bonus, it's free. Before you reach the food court, you'll make a right turn to go toward the observation deck. The elevator doors open automatically and take you directly to the 42nd floor observation deck. We were greeted by a security guard once we got off the elevator. We were fortunate there was no one else there on the observation deck. The glass windows provide spectacular views toward the Hudson, toward the Capitol, and to the south. Great information boards are provided in each area to give you information about the buildings that you are peering at. This is the New York State Capitol. This was one of the most impressive architectural masterpieces I have ever seen. Talk about stepping into the old world. What do you think? The sign says that the New York State Capitol was constructed from 1867 to 1899. The Capitol was officially declared complete by Governor Theodore Roosevelt, one of my favorites. Five different architects worked on the building, which cost $25 million. The legislative chambers and the million dollar staircase are among the highlights of the building. I won't be taking you on a tour of the building today in this video, but one will be coming up soon. Teddy declared the building complete. It wasn't really complete. Once he got in office, he was tired of the overspending and said, this thing is done. It is also quite incredible because as they mentioned, there were five different architects and you can see the different styles within the interior, but this is a spectacular building. And of course, the I Heart New York, the I Love New York sign is right out front. Capital tours are available Monday through Friday and are free. The Robert Abrams Building for Law and Justice can also be seen adjacent to the Capitol. Simply stunning, don't you think? Uh, it looks like a castle. Wouldn't you love to live in a big old house like that? Have you subscribed yet? If not, please subscribe. And if you have, Thank you. The other unusual thing that we saw was the Egg Center for the Performing Arts. This striking spherical structure is known as the Egg Performing Arts Center with a 980 seat main theater with a wraparound lounge and a 460 seat studio theater. The Egg hosts dance, music theater, and other special events. And when walking around the plaza, I took quite a few pictures of the Egg. It's very photogenic wouldn't you say? The Alfred E. Smith State Office Building is a 32-story Art Deco skyscraper and was built in 1928 and is named after Alfred Emanuel Smith, a four-term governor of New York. Engraved into the building's facade are the names of all 62 New York State counties. So if you want to learn them, walk around the building. Out another window, let's see what we can discover. Several churches, a courthouse, and the Albany City Hall, another old world looking style architectural masterpiece. This view looks out over the Hudson River and some incredible historical structures. The Hudson River runs 306 miles between New York City and the Adirondacks, where it begins at a site called 
lake tier of the clouds. In 1609, Henry Hudson sailed his ship, the Half Moon, up the river into what is now the Albany area. The Port of Albany receives millions of tons of cargo each year, including molasses, cocoa beans, generators, and road salt. That's quite the combination. The port occasionally hosts a visiting vessel, a sailing ship, or a submarine open for public viewing. There's the Albany Rensselaer Rail Station, the site of the earliest Dutch settlement in Albany. In 1624, the Dutch West Indies Company founded a permanent settlement in this area. Eighteen families from the Netherlands came up the Hudson River and built a fort and homes called Fort Orange, at a site what is now the foot of Madison Avenue and Broadway. This structure caught my attention, State University Plaza. Completed in 1918, this Gothic-style building, I call it old world, wouldn't you, is the headquarters for the central administration of the State University of New York. Its weather vane is a replica of Henry Hudson's ship, the Half Moon, and is said to be the largest working weather vane in North America. Isn't this incredible? The amount of history that you can learn from my videos. Just saying, if you just take time to go to these places and this is free and spectacular. You can't beat it. Leave a comment below if you've visited Albany and went to the Corning Tower observation deck. On the other side, we see more things to learn about, including the World War II Memorial. This memorial honors the 1.7 million New Yorkers who served our country in World War II. That is a huge number. I would have never guessed that, even if it would have been C in a multiple choice. The pool is surrounded by a hedge in the shape of a laurel wreath, symbolizing heroism grief and triumph. And as I mentioned earlier, we parked behind the New York State Museum. And then the Executive Mansion, built in 1856 for an Albany businessman. It was purchased in 1877 by New York State for $45,000. Well, that was a lot of money, don't you think? It has been home to 33 of New York's governors, including Grover Cleveland, Teddy Roosevelt, and Franklin Roosevelt, the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception, the seat of the Roman Catholic Diocese of Albany. This is the largest church in Albany, built of dark brownstone in the Gothic style. I call it old world style. The church was dedicated in 1852. Amazing. You can see its roof is in the shape of a cross. The plaza is a great place to walk around and take in the architecture, the art, the fountain, and all of the scenery. The Corning Tower, a great destination in Albany. There's a few more things I want to tell you about. One is the State Education Building. It was built in 1912. This limestone building is inspired by Greek architecture. The building was the home of the State Museum for many years, and today it houses offices of the State Education Department. An impressive building. And you see how they have State Education Building etched across the top there? I believe that was done later, because when this was built, it wasn't the Education Building. Realize that just because the building has something etched in it, that doesn't mean it was there when it was originally constructed. As we are walking around the Capitol, we found this sign. It was very interesting. In the middle of the street to the east stood Fort Frederick, goal of Burgoyne's drive to split the colonies, 1777. So much to investigate. And you know I love these clocks, and this one says City of Albany. We found several military memorials in addition to the World War II memorial, and some interesting buildings like this ginormous Renaissance Hotel. The Bull Moose Club. Do you know who that is? You see the spectacles and the mustache? Teddy. He was a member of the Bull Moose Party. And this old telephone building? And who is in this telephone building now? Well, it's Verizon and AT&T. Appropriate, wouldn't you say? I want to encourage you to visit Empire Plaza and take a ride up the elevators to the observation deck in Corning Tower. Flip-flops on the ground. Unclassic road trip.